Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining today and this uh, next uh, edition of uh, our Aramaic word study. And I want to expose you today a little bit more to some of the tools that are available um, to you to aid you in your um, study of the Aramaic uh, New Testament or the Peshitta. And again, um, I'm doing this uh, just because it has been so fascinating to me and I, I want to try to presented in a way not to, uh, the goal here is not to impress anyone with knowledge because certainly I'm just an average type person. Um, and But to show you that this is something that is within the reach of each and every person. Um, you don't have to have degrees behind your name. While I certainly am in favor of education and, and pursuing it uh, as I can, uh, as diligently as I can, um, God has provided so many wonderful tools for us to be able to study the Word of God and just come across with a, a greater knowledge. And um, what it does for me is it just creates more awe and wonder uh, for the great God that we serve and how beautiful His Word is and how He has left us um, such an awesome um, a legacy and ability to uh, study the scriptures and to just get to know him more and draw closer to him. And so um, you'll see on your screen, a site that I use uh, very often is called thearamaicscriptures.com. And uh, this is a beautiful site um, and you can read more about the, the lady who uh, developed it. Um, but it gives us the ability to search and uh, go through the New Testament uh, called the Bashita in the Aramaic language, which is a sister language to Hebrew. And you'll see that you're going to see some different type of letters here that if you're familiar with the Hebrew, um, these letters will look a little bit different. These are Syriac um, letters. And again, the, uh, the in the Syriac, um, uh, realm, which is basically the language of the New Testament church that was centered in the the, the eastern uh, part of the world, mainly around Babylon, uh, Syria. That's where the Syriac uh, name comes from. But within the Syriac uh, language, there are different fonts, different uh, characters that we, are called letters that look a little bit uh, strange. But trust me, um, if you can learn Hebrew, and actually if you can learn any language um, that you've uh, worked at, they will have different letters and different alphabet. And so while it may look uh, somewhat intimidating at first, please don't be overwhelmed by it. Um, there is a learning curve, but it's uh, they only have 22 letters, the same as the Hebrew language. And uh, it is very worthwhile to learn and um, doesn't require um, much effort whatsoever. It just takes time and just takes practice and you can learn the, the alphabet. And so uh, what I want to uh, share with you today is something as I was reading the Christmas story, because we just passed the Christmas season, um, I was reading in Luke chapter 1 verse 13 and uh, reading the story about the um, uh, uh, inception, conception of John and the coming of John the Baptist as the forerunner of Jesus. And uh, I want to show you just uh, something that stuck out with me. And so I want to help you navigate uh, in the AramaicScriptures.com. Um, we're going to be reading from Luke's gospel. So uh, there's numerous ways. There are highlights up up on the front here. And if you hit the more, um, the fly out comes and it goes through these other books of the New Testament. But we're going to click on the Gospel of Luke, or Luke's Gospel. And uh, as we do that, the page changes. Um, and uh, we come to, um, again, you'll see what I like about what she does here is um, she includes some words in the English as she translates and includes some of the um, uh, Aramaic words uh, phonetically spelled out in English characters so that you can, uh, so that the reader, we can start acclimating ourselves and getting used to the pronunciation without having to learn um, the uh to read the alphabet that they have. And so what you'll see here is the Evangelun 
Evangelion of Eshu Mashika. Now Eshu Mashika, Eshu is Jesus um, in Aramaic and Mashika is Messiah in Aramaic. And so it just is a nice way to kind of get those words going through. You get to, you get to pronounce them, you get to hear how they're sounded uh, so that when you start learning the uh, actual letters, um, the sounds won't be so foreign to you. And so uh, we, of course, the story we're reading is in chapter one. And so we're going to scroll down and this is a um, somewhat of uh, a dual um, or a parallel language here. Um, the Aramaic in the Syriac or the Estrangelo script, Estrangela, however you want to pronounce it, Estrangela script is uh, above it. And of course, it reads from uh, right to left, just like Hebrew does. And so um, where you see my cursor is actually where the, the first start of the verse goes and it goes from right to left and then of course they put the English underneath and that reads from from left to right. So scrolling down to verse 13 is where um, I want to show you what prompted me and so I was reading about uh, the angel appearing to Zacharias and what's nice here is it gives you the word malaka which is very similar to uh, what you'd learn in Hebrew for um, you know, Melech, uh, coming from to rule, to be in charge of, um, in, a, in a realm. And here it's uh, putting the emphasis on heavenly messenger, which is where our word angel comes from. Again, hearing, you know, we get accustomed to the words, we hear the word angel, and, you know, it becomes, uh, it loses somewhat of its effect on us because we hear it all the time. We have all these church words that we hear so often that we really don't know where they came from or truly what they mean. We think we have an understanding, but when we study the uh, ancient languages, the Hebrew and the Aramaic, we get to see the basis and the root behind the word. And so uh, we think of it as a heavenly messenger. And for me, maybe for some people, it, it means the same thing. It doesn't have any extra um, benefit. But for me, it just adds a deeper level of understanding and creates a, a better awareness within me um, as to what uh, an angel is and here it's a heavenly messenger and then it says don't fear and it puts the word and you can sound it out they dachal um, means to have don't have fear on the count of um, the lusach your prayer has been heard and antanach uh, and again it, we know the words and it gives them in the, in the parentheses but it helps you to just to learn the pronunciation and uh, learn how the words sound so that, you know, later on, once you learn the letters, you can look up above here and say, okay, well, here uh, where I have my cursor is the word malacha. This is the M, L, the uh, Aleph, the Kaf, and the Ah, and the Aleph again. So you get to begin to see those words uh, later on as you're reading it. So, um, what stopped me or caused a remez for me is when uh, the angel said, here's what you're going to name your son. You will call his name. Of course, we, we know it's John, but the Aramaic spelled here is Yukhanan. And I just had to stop and I had to do a word study on on John or Yukhanan and find out why was this necessary? You know, what was there? We know that there's meanings in these words. And so this is where it led me into a word study. And uh, I want to show you how it led me and that the same tools that I'm going to show you here uh, obviously are available for you to use and encourage you to, to give it a try. Don't be scared of it. Uh, and you'll find it so rewarding and so enriching. So with this, this, you know, I want to learn more about Yukhanan. Um, what I noticed, of course, is that the letter J, which we have in English, does not exist in the Hebrew or Aramaic language. They have no letters that begin with J. Um, their words begin with either a, a Y, which is a, a Yud, or a, a Vav, which is a, a V, or in um, uh, biblical uh, Hebrew or Aramaic, it could be a W, um, but those are the words that, that show up in, in many of these. And I'm going to stay with the more modern um, pronunciation that you'd find in a Jewish synagogue. 
And so I'm going to go with the, the yud or the, the, the y sound here. And so uh, what we want to look at is, okay, this word yukanan is up here in these little squiggly things some, somewhere. And seeing that it is at the end of the verse in English, we could guess that this could be in the end of the verse in um, this Aramaic language. So sure enough, we look up here and uh, we see that this last word, you see where my, my cursor is floating over this little tiny little, um, looks like a carrot <laughs> on a keyboard. Um, it's the, the yud and then it would have the, uh, the vav or uh, would allow you to have the vowel for the, um, the, the U in here, and then this little squiggly is the equivalent of a chet um, in Hebrew, and then this taller letter is the nun, and then finally this line down is the uh, nun sofit in Hebrew, or the final nun. So this last uh, little squiggly group of words, letters here, is yukhanan. And so, um, we're going to take you to how to dig deeper in this. So as we scroll up, you'll see at the top of the page, there is a uh, word called study tool. And when you hover over it, your cursor becomes a little hand, which tells you that it's a hotkey. And you can click on that. So we click on study tool. And it takes us to a fantastic website um, called Dukrana. And you may be familiar with it, but it is um, is it is a website put together uh, to be able to study um, the Aramaic language and gives us lots of tools, lots of uh, lexicons, uh, dictionaries, uh, cross references. Um, it gives us some history on the ancient manuscripts that were compiled um, that comprise the Peshitta uh, New Testament. So uh, we are in what's called the Peshitta tool and the Peshitta New Testament. And so when you get to this first um, part here, where you, where you start is telling the uh, software, what do you want to look at? How do you want your words configured? And um, you can try different things later on. You get different results. But um, through what I've uh, been pleased with, I like to click um, using the United Bible um, Service Translation, United, United Bible Society, uh, how they uh, compile these together. Because remember, there was no one document that someone found in a closet saying, oh, here's all the New Testament from you know Matthew to Revelation, all bound together, all in order, um, every page complete, not a not a page missing, not a word missing. Um, the Word of God, the Bible, was not found in that fashion. It was found in fragments and pieces and um, incomplete manuscripts that uh, the researchers had to compile these manuscripts together and compare and look for the missing pages and the missing words and compare the sentences and find you know that not all of them match completely. And so what they did was they took these documents um, uh, in the, the Aramaic language, and I believe there is close to over 200 of them that they found in the Aramaic, and they compiled them into one document that uh, group brought everything together and made it uh, similar for us to easy for us to have one document. And so the United Bible Society did that um, and brought this together. So we are looking at what they've compiled from numerous documents um, that existed to create a common text. And uh, in reality, the New Testament was formed in the same way. Uh, much of the Old Testament was formed in a, in a very similar manner. Um, but this is more similar to what they did with the Greek manuscripts. There were you know, over almost 6,000 Greek manuscripts that they sifted through and sorted through to come up with, and all in fragments and pieces and from different time frames with different um, inclusions and exclusions. And they put them together to create a Greek um, manuscript that then was later um, translated into English and all the other different languages. So uh, again, having an, uh, this understanding helps un helps us formulate how the Word of God was given to us, and um, you know, and to understand what the translators had to do to create these documents. Um, and uh, I don't know, it just helps me get a better understanding of you know, we throw around a lot of terms of um, you know, the 
inspiration of God's word, the preservation of God's word, um, you know, the uh, understanding of of how it came to us is somewhat uh, different. We have a different understanding when we don't understand how the language was given. When when we do understand how the language was given, it. Um, helps us to have a broader understanding of these uh, verses and the text that it was written in and how we acquired it. Um, I don't know, it, it just helps me a lot and has opened my understanding. So uh, that was a long uh, digression here, but I like to click uh, to use this Bushida text with options. I like to include the vowel signs. I prefer to use the Eastern script over the Western. Um, there's not a lot of difference, but I feel the Eastern script more aligns with the Syriac um, historical background, the Church of the East that was centered in Babylon, which was actually, we believe, founded by the Apostle Peter. That was his headquarters where he reached out to the Jewish people who were in that area and later to the Gentiles that were also in that area. And then uh, because I'm uh, quite familiar with the Hebrew, I like to include the Hebrew characters so that I can uh, have that visual of comparing between them. So I check those boxes. Um, then I want to go up here and scroll down to uh, the book of, of Luke chapter 1. Unfortunately, this is where I have a little bit of a um, uh, issue with uh, this software where I feel it could be more beneficial. This pull down to me is quite cumbersome, um, but it does work and they've done a nice job of pulling it together. So once we do that, we scroll down to this tiny little button down here that's called load verses. And unless you click that, um, you won't make any progress. So we click load verses. And uh, up comes the screen. We have to scroll down to the bottom where the verses appear. Um, there are other things in here that you can look at uh, that will help you and be some reading aids. But what we want to see here is, okay, here we start. Luke chapter 1. And you'll see it has the uh, Syriac above it, uh, Aramaic, with the Hebrew down below. Remember, both read from right to left. And you begin to, uh, at least for me, it was making... Nice parallels to be able to look at here for Luke. We'd see uh, a mem, uh, a mem, a ta, and a lamed. And you look up here in the astringello text, and you get to see, okay, this is a, a mem, this is a ta, this is a lamed. And as, as you can see, when you hover over it, it takes you to a um, lexicon where it tells you the root word, um, how it's pronounced, um, gives you just a little bit of identification of it in a very simple form. So what we want to look at is uh, verse 13. So we're going to scroll down to verse 13 in the, the book of Luke. And uh, here's our verse. And of course, um, unless you're fluent in Hebrew or Aramaic, Aramaic, it won't make much sense to you. And again, this is to just help you get through that next step. But what really makes this useful is this wonderful little word here called analyze in brackets. And when you hold your um, cursor over the analyze, you see a little hand pops up telling you it's a hotkey and you click on the word analyze. Um, up pops another window within the screen and I'm going to um, somewhat maximize it here so we can, we can see it. And um, I always want to keep it big enough so that it shows up in the window of the Zoom, of the uh, screen of the software that we're using. And so what you see is this verse, and it's not quite all showing, but um, gives you the indication. And then it includes uh, four translations. Um, obviously, the King James is probably the one you're most familiar with. The other ones, the Etheridge, Murdoch, and Lamsa, are uh, all... Um, scholars of the Aramaic language who created uh, translations from the Aramaic into English. And of course, they are three of the most common, well-known that people use. Etheridge um, tends to stay with some of the names that are, uh, and doesn't translate the names in English, but kind of keeps them in their um, Aramaic format so that you can begin to get the flavor of it. And you'll see he keeps the, the name of John and uh, he uses a J. Again, he's, there's a lot of uh, 
different viewpoints on how to translate from the Aramaic and the Hebrew into the English. And so he um, knows that most everyone's used to saying John and using a J, so he uh, stays with the J, but puts up here in brackets that is pronounced Yuchanan. So again, interesting, it doesn't change much. The words are very similar. Um, they don't uh, deviate too much from what the King James version is. But here's where we get to the useful tool. And that is the grammatical analysis. So as we scroll down, um, again, it takes the word as you see it, starting from the right to the left, and puts the word word in here. So it uh, gives you a meaning of the word, and you begin to piece together um, the words themselves. And uh, it's wonderful to go through, but uh, for the sake of time uh, and showing you where it is, I want to get to the last word in the verse, and that is the word John. Every word um, in Syriac, in the Aramaic, has a number assigned to it, um, the same as in Hebrew or Greek. And so uh, what you'll see here is it has a two in front of it, which is really indicated to represent an S for Syriac. So if you see a two in front, don't uh, worry about it. What's important is the last four numbers. And so uh, here you see the word spelled uh, Yuchanan and and uh, this little uh, box to the um, right of the first one shows the vowel pointings above it. Um, Syriac does have vowel pointings just like Hebrew does. They're slightly different, slightly different locations. But uh, again, if um, you just browse through it, work on it a little bit, they become very um, clear. And um, after a while, you, you understand it just like you would Hebrew. So uh, we want to click on uh, this number, 8953. You see when you hold your uh, cursor over it, it um, shows again that little hand, which is a hotkey. And so you click on that and up pops another window. And so uh, this is where the, the study comes in as you get to see these words pop up and you get to see the parts of speech, um, how it's vocalized. Um, you look and you see um, what their description is. And of course, right here, it doesn't tell you a lot. It says it's a personal name. Okay, that I understand that, but it, that's not as satisfying for me. I want to find the root of this word. I know it has a meaning. Uh, words always have meaning. And so here we get an opportunity to look up in these lexicons. And all of these in blue have a hot key to them. And uh, you can go through some of them uh, go through all of them and, and gain some meanings. Some of them are in different languages. There's some that are in French. There's um, some that are in Latin. Um, there's some that have English translations, some that do not, that would be in the Syriac script. And the one I like to use uh, just as a starting place is MJ, which stands for um, Yastros. Yastro is a Hebrew scholar who took and categorized all the words of Aramaic that were found in the uh, Targums and the um, Midrash of the Hebrew um, study of the Old Testament. And uh, these are basically all of the commentaries that were written in Aramaic about the Hebrew Old Testament. And so these words uh, have antiquity uh, meaning to them and help us to understand the root meanings. So we want to click on this one. Uh, it comes to page 567. Again, just doing a little bit of shifting here so that you can see the page as it comes up, trying to make this a little larger. And uh, the thing you will need to, to know about this is you will need to know the uh, characters, and you'll see that it uses the Hebrew alphabet and the Hebrew characters. So uh, a little bit of a challenge there, but actually, if you just copy the, the the word down and the letters, you know, it's like a puzzle. You can match the the picture of what you've written down to the picture of the word that's there. And uh, you don't have to know how to pronounce it. You don't have to have it memorized. You just need to, to look through. And so as I'm looking through here, I'm looking for the, the yod, the, the vav, the, um, the, uh, the hit. And um, I'm not seeing that come up here. Um, and so I'm scrolling down. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing something, but um, this isn't 
giving me the name of, of John of Yukonon. And sometimes you'll find that, but I, I'm going to find that it is on the next page. And so I'm going to scroll ahead to page 568. And as I'm coming down, oh, look what I see here. I see the word Yohanan, John, and the word I'm looking for, uh, Yukonon. And so, okay, it gives me a little bit of introduction. Obviously, it wasn't a brand new name that was just conceived or created by the angel for this occasion. The name did exist before. There were people named John. And so uh, we find out a little bit of history on it, but I want to know more. Where did this word come from? And so I'm going to scroll down looking at the um, the uh, comparison. What is so neat about Hebrew and Aramaic when you go to these lexicons, which is another word for dictionary, is that uh, the words on either side of the word you're looking for are related and have their roots, root meaning of the word are similar to the ones you're looking for. This is uh, not um, found in our English um, dictionaries at all. You can't do this, but in the Hebrew you can. And so we look backwards here and we see that there's a form of the word yukanan that's called yohani. There's yohana, yohana, which is somewhat interesting because the word yohana is the name of a species of locust. Now, reading the, uh, knowing the, the story of John when he grew up in the wilderness, what was um, some of the food that he ate? He ate honey and wild locusts. Well, here his name even uh, is based upon a species of locust. So again, very interesting. But And I'm not here to answer this question for you, but it can pique your interest as to why of the connection of locusts. What does locust mean? Does it really mean the bugs that he's eating? Is there a deeper spiritual meaning? How Interesting it is that the name of John actually is the name of a species of locust, and he ate those. Again, is it a coincidence, or is it a is there a deeper spiritual meaning? And so we hear the word Johanna. And uh, so, again, very uh, interesting in where this comes from. What we're going to find is there's not a lot here telling me of any different meaning. And so I need to look a little bit closer as to uh, the root of this word. So I'm going to exit out of here and look back at the, um, the verse itself that we, um, that we were looking for. And let's see if I can get that to here. Okay, oops. I backed out too far. But what I want to show you is that the, um, the word for John um, is a compound word. And so let's get back to that verse again in verse 3. And here's where going to the Hebrew will, will help a, a little bit. As we look at that word, um, we're going to see that the word Yohanan actually is a, is a compound word. And it starts with a, a yud and a vav, which is where we get the word ya from. Now, that may stick with you here if you understand, if you remember word hallelujah or Elijah, um, which would be Eliyahu in uh, Hebrew. Um, this is a form of the name of God. That John's name actually is a a segment or a form of the name of God, and it's two words. One is is Yah. And the second part is a het, nun, and, and vav, which is based upon the word chanan, which is the word for grace in the Bible. And so John's name means the grace of Yahweh, the grace of, of God, or God is gracious. And um, I think that's a beautiful uh connection here, a beautiful analogy that helps us understand what John's um, message was, what his purpose was for coming. Um, if we look to some other uh, biblical resources, um, this word uh, of John, this name of John, um, 
can actually have a reference of someone who is being called or upon someone is being bestowed upon. And obviously John was the forerunner. He was bestowed upon to be the forerunner for Jesus. Um, it actually talks about life and bringing back to life. Um, again, all fits together with the message of who John was introducing uh, Jesus as, as our Messiah. And uh, so another part of this that uh, I want to show you in closing is that um, the Hebrew words are also have a numerical value to them. And it's something that uh, English does not have. And that every, because Hebrew do, and the same with Aramaic does not have uh, a number system. They don't have one, two, three, four, five. They use their letters so that A would be one, B would be two. If they had a C, it would be three. But um, you know they have an alphabet that they use those letters for numbers. So what this means is the the word for John has a numerical value. And so if we add up the the yod is 10 and the vav is 6 and the chet is 8, the noon is 50 and the final noon is 50, um, that adds up to a total of 124. And with that is called gematria. And uh, again, this just shows you the beauty of God's word and how beautiful it is. You can look up other words in the Bible that have that same numerical value of 124, and many of them will relate, will have similar meanings, will have complementary meanings. And so when I look up um, that word of, uh, of um, 124, and I have a book here that I'm going to just hold in front of the camera, and it is um, uh, by Gutman Locks, and it's called Gamatria the spice of Torah. And uh, what it does is it has all of the words and their numerical values to them. And so when I look up the number 124, I find that that number also is the same for the word witness, is the same for the word testify, it is the same for the word at an appointed season, it is same for the sentence, or I should say sentence appointed season, and the fragment of the sentence, when I brought forth, all equal up to the word 120, a number of 124. And all of these apply beautifully to the, the name of John, the message of what John was doing, and uh, the purpose for John's life. And uh, so that was just a little bit, uh, I could probably go on for another half an hour with all the other similarities and and studies into the um, different uh, words that comp or letters that comprise the, the word of John. But I wanted to give you a flavor for how rich and how beautiful God's word is and how the depth of meaning there are um, to this. And so I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, again, uh, write me a note if you want to do more of this or let me know your comments or thoughts in, in reply email. But I just pray that God will bless you and that you will really just totally know how much he loves and cares for you and what a deep uh, relationship we can have with him by studying his word. God bless you and have a great day. Bye-bye.